All right, guys, so we're going to watch one of the videos from my Blender Octane 101 guide. It's a full course that I'm basically making to teach you how to use Blender Octane. For those of the members who are in the community, they get immediate access to videos as they're being released because I'm building the course as we go. So if you're interested in that, check the link down below. All right, guys, so we're going to be taking a look at the specular material next. Again, this is just a quick overall. Some of the we'll break down more details in later videos. So the specular material is pretty much what we use to make glass. Here is what we've got here. I've changed it up. I found my old shader ball. Seeing this will actually help to really show showcase this a lot more better. So we do have refraction here or reflection, reflection. I can't speak right now. Sorry, guys. First got my first cup of coffee for the morning. So still trying to wake up here. There you can see we got what that's doing here. It's just basically adding a little bit of color on there. So that's super cool. Then we have transmission. Again, that fills in more of the, the color for your transmission. Then we have the principal B, the BRDF model. And you can use Octane, you can use Beckman, you've got GGX, we've got GGX Energy Preserve, and then we also have STD, okay? So I pretty much, I'm a fan of GGX because that's what I saw in Cycle, so I always tend to use that one a little bit. Again, you can go into the manual to find out more detail about what these are actually doing on the back end here. Then we have roughness. It's just like what it says here. We can go ahead and crank up our roughness. There we go. Nice foggy bog. That looks great. I, I mean, I really love the way Octane handles its specular and its roughness and this, this whole setup right here. That's one reason why I switched it over. So we got that. And then I, we got our anatropy, which again, we really won't see the effects of that right now till we get into that setting. And we'll control the rotation and the spread on that. Again, some of the same controls, IOR, refractive index here. So we can change the re index refraction. There we go. You can add more or less. Super cool. Let's go ahead and set that back to 1.5. Then film layer, just like earlier, when we saw in the universal, we can put that thin little layer on the top there and we can control that there too. So all of those settings there, still pretty much the same. Now up, I forgot, allow caustics, which this setup is not showing it. You'll basically need a, like, a light coming from the back, but we'll get into caustics in a whole nother video, but this will need to be enabled for those caustics, caustics to uh, appear. So we've got that. Then we've got our transmission properties. Again, I don't really know what this one is. As I find out about it, I will teach you guys about it. It'll probably be in later videos so I can study up a little bit, but I never really use it. Again, here is the dispersion model. Again, different ones here, different formulas, which I just keep this stock. Here is our medium. If we add in a random walk medium, now we can really see what we're getting into here. Again, the density is 100%, it's very high. And plus, I don't have a lot of samples in my preview at the moment. I can make this down to 10, and then you can kind of see what we've got going on there. Again, all these different steps, we will get more involved in this later once we get into this dedicated video for this. But this is basically how you can add in some subsurface. And there it is. Again, remember, we can get a different subsurface look if we're using the universal because we will switch it to diffuse, which will be a little bit more of a different look. Then we get into opacity, and this is so you can clearly pull it off. This is not for hiding stuff out of your scene. That's what I meant to say. You don't use this to hide things out of your scene. There's different ways of doing that. Let's add in a noise texture, and then I'll go ahead and actually not a fractal noise. I just want a noise texture. There it is, and I'll plug this into the opacity. And again, anything that pretty much has the same color node noodle here, we can go ahead and plug that in. All right, we'll get into that in some other videos too. So if I come in here, maybe crank up this to 50 on the contrast, and then let's go ahead and bring up the size a little bit. Now you can see that it is literally wherever the black is, it's cutting out. That's what we would use that for more. Like if you had a chain link, a chain link fence and you wanted to have that cut out, you would use this here. Okay. That's our opacity. Again, it's not to be used to hide things from your scene. Just don't fake shadows. You can clearly see what the fake shadow does now a little bit better than on the universal. So again, this is calculating what real light would do in the in in the case of this glass and the IOR levels. And then it does take a little bit longer to render. Take note, especially around this area here on the bottom here. And if I go to fake shadows, that kind of thins out a little bit. It looks a little bit more thin, but it's easier and quicker to render, especially around here. You notice, look at the difference there. If I turn it back on, you see here, we had a little bit of more darkness here, that shadow pretty much is almost pretty much gone, right? Fake shadows. And then again, alpha, alpha effect alpha, 
you're not really seeing it in this one here. I'm going to have to find a situation to set that up for that, but we'll get into that will have its own dedicated video. Thin wall, again, if we wanted to make like a very thin wall plastic or bubble-like material, here's the thin wall happening again. And then we get into our geo stuff again. Bump node, we can add in a procedural node noise here. And then you can add in some type of bump, just like we have did in the other ones. Here is our bump height. We can add in a normal map. Same thing, we have our displacement. Again, we can add more displacement and displace this, which we saw earlier. And these all pretty much are the same like in the other, in the other nodes. Smooth, here's the smooth. Again, it turns it off, smooths it on. Smooth terminator, rounded edges to make it look like a bevel. Priority, which um, we'll get into that in a different video because I don't know too much about that. And then our custom AOVs and our material layer mixer. You'll see in the pattern now that keeps repeating. I keep repeating myself because this is the pattern that you will constantly see on most of these material nodes. So let's get into the next one. If you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.